Why is now the best time to invest in LATAM? Latin America is huge. It's like it's actually occupies the largest latitude on the map, which is why my company is called Latitude. But we don't behave like it. And we're actually very alike. We like to focus on how we're all very different, but we're actually very alike. We like very similar music. We like similar food. And our governments are just as corrupt and you're just as likely to get robbed or kidnapped in most of our countries. Um, and so there's just it's important to focus on the similarities. That's something I learned while growing uh, globally at Duolingo. So you have a very, very large number of people with huge problems that have not been solved and that can be solved at scale through tech. And then you have people in developed markets who absolutely don't know what it's like to grow up in those markets and don't understand those pain points and don't understand what are the barriers that they're going to face while we're there because they just don't know how complicated it can be. But And then you have amazing people in Latin America who do understand that. The problem is we didn't have money and we didn't have the talent to do that before. And now these things have changed. Why? One, because we have people who have gone to quote unquote Silicon Valley, whether it be in the clouds or not. So just like broad Silicon Valley, China, India, markets where they've gotten to work at tech companies that have scaled to billions of dollars and hundreds of millions of users and are now coming back to that time to build. You have people who have now worked at companies like Nubank, which IPO'd with a valuation of like 30 something billion dollars um, and have learned what that's like and how that works and are now going on to build their own companies, whether it be as founders or as builders. So you have much more talent than you've ever had. And then you have money, firstly, because investors in the US and abroad are looking to Latin America because they understand that it's a huge opportunity. There are more VC firms and more family offices that are starting to look at tech now because it's almost inevitable. So you have more money. Our money is really devalued. So anything coming from abroad is worth a lot and can make a huge splash. So we're at this amazing moment that I believe to be a, a really serious inflection point where we're building solutions for hundreds of millions of people, a lot of infrastructure stuff that's super non-sexy, but basic, like B2B, SaaS, things that helps SMBs, like small and medium businesses, understand how to do things without using pen and paper and giving people access to health, to education, to banking. Like that's, it's not like I want a better dating app. It's like, I would like to have a bank account. I would like to be able to see a doctor. Those are very basic things that are very core human pain points that affect a lot of people. And so this is the time to build. And, and then there's another thing on top of that, which is just the connectivity. Like we are so online now. Everyone has access to, to the internet in one way, shape or form and to technology. It's ubiquitous. So you can really reach people from all different sectors of the population. Wow, I really reached a passion point there, didn't I? <laughs> well, this is obviously what I'm dedicating my life to. And not only because I think that it's one of the most meaningful things we can work on, like it's 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 meaningful to work on tech, but then if you can actually improve the lives significantly of people and at hundreds of millions of people at a time, and especially when they're middle socioeconomic levels, then you're making your life count as a human being. And I think that it's a great opportunity to make money.